Section 11.1 .1 is about one-way analysis of variance in the more general context where the number of populations could be more than two. Generally, we might have C populations, population 1, population 2, all the way through population C. In specific examples, of course, there will be a certain number of populations. From each of our populations, we're going to take a sample. Xij represents, as it did last time, the ith observation in the jth sample. So for example, X2C is the second observation in the seeth sample. To complete a one-way analysis of variance, we first do the hypothesis test to determine whether population means differ. After we've completed the hypothesis test, we check the model assumptions. If we've concluded that the model assumptions hold and the, that the population means are different, we then proceed to a Tukey-Kramer procedure to determine which pairs of population means actually differ. For the hypothesis test, the null hypothesis is all of the population means are equal. The alternative hypothesis is not all the population means are equal. That is, at least one pair of population means are different. Here's a picture indicating the situation when H0 is true. All the population distributions lay on top of each other. Here's a picture indicating the situation when H1 is true. It says at least two of the population means are different. That would mean, and these pictures are for three populations, that would mean, for example, that two population means could be the same, two population means could be the same, and the other population mean would be different from the two that are the same. Or Another thing that could be true if H1 is true is each one of the population means could be different from each of the others. The next step in the hypothesis test is to choose the maximum probability of making a type 1 error. That is, the maximum risk we're willing to take of deciding that at least two of the population means are different when in fact they're all the same. The third step is choosing a test statistic and its probability distribution. The statement of step three also requires us to state first the model assumptions. These are the same as they were last time in our two population example. The first one, sampling is independent and random. The second, samples are from normal populations. And third, the normal populations have equal variances. If these model assumptions are true, then the appropriate test statistic would be MSA over MSW. You might recall MSA measures the amount of between sample mean variation, and MSW measures the amount of within sample variation. When MSA is bigger than MSW, that's evidence in favor of the statement that the population means are different. Again, if the model assumptions hold, then MSA over MSW has a F distribution with the number of populations, which is the same as the number of samples, minus one degrees of freedom for the numerator, and the total number of observations in all samples, minus the number of samples, uh, degrees of freedom for the denominator. In step four, we make our computations. And we record our computations in an analysis of variance table as we work through at the end of module one. 
SSA has a component from each one of the samples. The total number of observations in the J sample times the J sample mean minus the grand mean, that quantity squared, summed over all the samples. SSW also has a component from each one of the samples. It measures the amount of squared variation there is within each sample and then sums it over all samples. The total sum of square variation is nu. SST measures the amount of squared variation there is when all samples are put together and viewed as a single sample. The appropriate mean to use in that case is the grand mean. Here is a general result. SST equals SSA plus SSW. And the same result works for the degrees of freedom associated with SST. N minus 1 equals the degrees of freedom associated with SSA plus the degrees of freedom associated with SSW. The final step of the hypothesis test is to make our decision in a similar fashion as we discussed last time. Here is a specific example. The example involves four hospital locations. The data at each location involves emergency room waiting times for non-critical patients. There are three questions. Determine whether the mean waiting times at the four hospitals actually differ. Check the model assumptions. Determine which pairs of mean waiting times actually differ. I've moved to the next page. We are preparing to answer A by doing the one-way ANOVA hypothesis test. As illustrated in the last of the Excel screencasts last time, we go to the Data tab, select Data Analysis, that's the Analysis Tool Pack, Look at the menu and select the NOVA single factor. That will be on top of the menu. Click OK and do the rest of this list. Here is what the selection box will look like. We're placing the upper left hand corner of the output in cell F1. After clicking OK we obtain the analysis of variance output. You should recognize this output. Here are the sample mean waiting times at each location. I have added this column, taking the square root of the variance, to determine the standard deviation of waiting times at each location. Here's the analysis of variance table along with the p-value. I've moved to the next page. Here's the hypothesis test. The null hypothesis is all four of the mean waiting times are the same. The alternative hypothesis at least one pair of waiting times is different. Step two involves choosing a significance level. Alpha equals 0.05. The maximum allowable probability of a type 1 error of deciding that the waiting times are different when in fact they're all the same is set at 5%. That was actually given. Step 3, the test statistic and its probability distribution. Here are the model assumptions. Based on the model assumptions, the appropriate test statistic and probability distribution are MSA over MSW distribute it with an F distribution. There are four populations, or if you wish, four samples, minus one, C minus one, three degrees of freedom for the numerator, and total number of observations, 15 in each sample, times four samples, 60 observations, minus C, four samples, 60 minus four, 56 degrees of freedom for the denominator. 
Here is the ANOVA table just copied and pasted out of the Excel output. Note that the p-value here is 0 0.0009. Based on that p-value, our statistical decision is to reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative hypothesis. And we do that because the p-value is smaller than our significance level. If we decide in favor of H1, we're taking less than a 5% chance of being in error. What we've decided is at least one pair of population mean waiting times differ. In part B, we check the model assumptions. As an academic exercise, we can't do much relative to the random and independent samples assumption. We will assume it holds. Here's the scatter plot of the 15 observations at each hospital location. I've put the standard deviation for each of these samples right below the location. For the assumption of normal populations, we inspect the distribution of the waiting times at each of the four locations. We recall that the conclusion that MSA over MSW has the appropriate F distribution is robust to the assumption of normality. We decide that the normal assumption is satisfied. For the equal variance assumption, we ask when we compute the variance of each of the uh, sample waiting times, will we get approximately the same number? Recall that the standard deviations are just the square root of the variances. We could use the working rule which says if the largest sample standard deviation is less than the square root of 4 plus 2, the square root of 6, times the smallest sample standard deviation, which in this case it is, then it's safe to say the equal variance assumption is satisfied. We will make a separate screencast for the new procedure for today, the Tukey Kramer procedure, which is done to determine which pairs of mean waiting times actually differ.